Hi again then guys and welcome to the final, at least for now, tune setup for the 1.25 batch of cars and of course what better way to end than with the Ford Mark IV. Now incidentally as you just saw from the opening basically you can download this chaparral livery from my community page. All you need to do to do that is to click the first link in the description below. You can see all of my liveries and this one should come up pretty high, at least if you're watching this near to the time of release, of course. Now, as far as the tune itself, these expensive cars are notoriously crazy in terms of the amount of mileage points that it takes to actually upgrade them. Now, as you can see, I've got plenty of mileage points to do it with, but I prefer not to upgrade these cars given how much I actually use them or don't use them as the case may be. But of course, if you want to up upgrade it, lower the weight, increase the power, that's all down to you. What I've opted to do instead is to drop the weight and increase the power as much as you can without doing any actual level upgrades. But of course, if you do choose to upgrade it, it will obviously by definition be even quicker, significantly quicker in some ways such as top speed. So as far as traction control, of course, that will be down to you. Chances are, if you've got the time and patience to unlock enough money or earn enough money to get a car like this, you probably don't use traction control anyway, but you can, of course, use it if you want to. As far as tyres, we've got it on hards, just to show what it can do under most circumstances, and again, mediums or softs will obviously be even quicker. As far as suspension, we've dropped the ride height to 100mm, which still isn't ridiculously low, but it's quite a lot lower than it was. As far as the frequency, 2.85 front and rear. I've gone for 6 on the anti-roll for the front, 5 on the back. You could put both to 6 or both to 5, just to test them out and see what works better for you. As far as the compression on the dampers, we've got 56, 85 for the rebound, perhaps surprisingly no camber. I initially ran this car with 1 degree, and it was pretty good, but it was a little bit heavier than I wanted it to be, so I put it to 0 instead. But that'll depend on you, of course. The car has always aired more on the side of being heavy rather than slippery. It was exactly the same in GT6 as well. And as far as the tow angle, again, neutral. For the downforce, obviously it will depend very heavily on the track that you're on. Now this tune actually originated with me on the Nürburgring. It was not a top speed tune, but I've tested it both on the ring and at Le Mans without the chicane, so it can do both. It's really good for technical circuits and circuits which do require top end speed. This tune allows it to do over 210 without any slipstream. You can go even higher than that with slipstream, and especially if you increase the power, of course, but it's also primarily designed for cornering. And later on today, you'll see what it can do around the ring because that's where I drove it for the review of the car. So as far as downforce, that'll depend, as I said, on what track you're on. As far as the diff, I've gone for halfway on initial torque, and then as high as possible for both acceleration and braking. That might be too stiff or too heavy for some people, so feel free to adjust that if you feel the need. You can also go for 35 and 5 if you want to try something completely different, but as I said, that's down to you. As far as the gearbox, as I mentioned, it's very, very open to adjustment based on how much power and also how much downforce you give the car. Because obviously on a technical circuit, you don't need top end speed. Whereas somewhere like Le Mans or some of the Tokyo tracks, you definitely will. So as far as the auto setting, I've gone for 230 miles per hour with the fully customized gearbox to get that extra gear to work with. Then for the individual gears, we've gone for 3025, 1875, 1.3, 950, and 745. And then a final drive of 3.1. Now that, as I said, is good enough to get you up around 210, 211, and you're pretty close to the red line with that. So with Slipstream, you could probably get maybe 215, 220 out of it, possibly a little bit more, but not much more. So again, if you plan to do a lot of slipstream work with it, then you might want to extend fifth gear a little bit lower, say down to 730 or 720, that kind of region. Or alternately, you could extend the final drive a little bit lower, say to 3 instead of 3.1. And you will definitely want to adjust it if you have either more or less power. In particular, if you have more, you will need a longer gear setup, especially in fifth and final, to actually get better top speed. So, of course, as I said, it's very open to interpretation. All of my tunes are designed to be very versatile for different power levels, different classes. And although the class doesn't apply to this car, the level of tuning certainly does. So that's it for the setup. 
tons of room for variation, as I said, but now to show what it can actually do in action, let's take it to Le Mans. Now, without going too much into the car's review, because of course that'll be later on today, I've never been a huge fan of this vehicle. Not because it was bad, it was just not as sharp, not as strong, not as fast as many of the other cars of its equivalent price in GT6. In fact, the top speed was more like the 225 region compared to around 250 or even more that the Jag can do, that the Ferrari P4 can do, various others were quicker. And even something like the Shelby Daytona could do roughly the same kind of top speed, but if I recall correctly, with less power. Plus, it weighs a ton, which is heavier than the others, so it just never felt that great to me. I didn't particularly like the handling or the look of the car even, but now that you can repaint it, Chaparral livery, Porsche long tail livery, all that kind of stuff, plus you can, of course, now make it lighter, and it, I would say it definitely feels better than before. The physics, the sound, even the graphics are of course better than before. So I will say I definitely like the car more. And in terms of its potential with no power upgrades, minimal downforce and the current gear setup, you can get about 211 out of it, as you could see just then. And you could also tell you've got a little bit of room for slipstream if necessary. Also, like I said, in terms of lap times, without the chicanes, it's running with this exact tune about a 334 lap. So it's not quite on the pace of more modern machines, of course. I mean, why would you expect it to be? But for a classic, it is good. And you will often see, such as in the expensive classic racing events, one of which is here at Le Mans, that this car will often be alongside the Ferrari P4 in terms of leading the pack and catching up very quickly to the other cars. So it's definitely a weapon when used correctly, and it's a lot better, I would say, now than it was in GT6. So if you do decide to use this tune, I hope you have a ton of fun with it, and you can use it on both technical and high-speed circuits, just as I have with it as well. But if you want to see more tunes, including for the other expensive cars, you can click through right here on screen, and that's it. So for now, as always, thanks for watching.